What's up, guy and girl players of World of Warcraft? Pyro here, bringing you a mining 1 to 525 leveling guide. For more free WoW guides, check out my website at tarowowguides.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to level mining 1 to 525 the easiest and fastest way possible through farming. A good profession to level with mining is herbalism, and some good professions to go with mining are blacksmithing, jewel crafting, and engineering. Engineering can also help with you farming extra items once you get the cattle level zones. Before you get started, you'll want to download the add-on gatherer and its data. Next, get a few mining bags if you plan to mine a lot when you hit 525. I bought four, but you really should have three in one normal bag since gems will fill up your standard bag quickly. If you don't have the extra gold, just go with your normal bags, but make sure they're empty. Then, get a glove enchant for plus five to mining and some crappy gloves. I like the gatherer enchant since it's around 10g. If the enchant is some astronomical amount like on my server, buy the mats for around 10g and get someone to enchant your gloves. Lastly, be repaired, have some food, water, blare some music, and have fun. Now that all the prep is out of the way, learn apprentice mining for your primary profession. Ask a guard in any major city to find out where the mining trainer is. Don't forget to buy a mining pick from the supply vendor. Also, make sure your tracking is set to find minerals and your minimap is zoomed all the way out. Alright, you can finally start mining. You can level in any starting zone, but I'll be showing Duratar. Throughout the video, you'll have zone choices and I'll put all the maps, including alliance maps, on my website at tarawildguides.com for easy viewing. After entering Duratar, you'll just follow the route on the screen. Before I forget though, open your interface options and check auto loot. This will auto loot everything in your bags without clicking. You'll want to follow this route for 2 laps or until you have around 100 copper ore and then head to the trainer. Then smell all the copper ore in your bags. Next learn all the available skills and journeyman miner. Journeyman allows you to go to level 150 and try not being a noob like me and forgetting it. Whoa Taro, where are you going? Aren't you forgetting to actually train journeyman? There you go, turn that cow tart around. For this next section, we'll head over to Hillsbrad, so hop on the Tears Full Glade Zep if you're Horde, or fly there if you're Lions. As you can tell, I got the new air mount boots called Air Hoofs. Pretty cool, right? I can also disappear. Wa-bam! Where I be? Okay, so you've made it to Hillsbrad, and basically here you just follow the route that I've got laid out on the map. After you mine up around 50 to 60 tin ore, you can smelt it and make some bronze bars for skill ups. From what I've found though, it's quicker to continue farming, believe it or not. Continue on until you reach at least skill level 125, which should only take 2 laps or so. Then head to the closest mining trainer and learn everything available including expert miner which will let you get the 225 mining. After that, smelt all the silver ore you have. Next, head out to western plague lens where you'll farm iron ore. You may also find gold ore, but won't be able to mine it until you have 150 with the glove enchant or 155 without. No biggie, there shouldn't be too many. As I say that, I run into one. Ha! Oh, and I just want to mention that being able to fly and level mining in the old school zones is a huge boost. If you don't have a flying mount, then just level mining as you level your character. After two laps or so, you should hit 175, so you'll want to head back to the mining trainer and learn everything available. Then smelt whatever gold ore you have. Next, hop on the Zep to Orgrimmar for Horde or the boat to Duskwallow Marsh for Alliance and go to Fellwood. This place is filled with Mithril and has a very easy route to follow. Just follow the route around and you should find all the Mithril you need plus a true silver vein here and there within a lap or so. After you hit 225, head to the closest mining trader and learn everything plus Artisan Miner. For Horde, that'll be Org, and Alliance, it'll be Darkshore. Next, smelt all the mithril you have, then train again and smelt any true silver you have. You want to have at least 230 in mining with gloves or 235 without before you leave the trainer. Next, it's off to Winter Spring, one of the most underrated mining spots in my opinion. It has a very simple route with both small thorium veins and rich thorium veins. You won't be able to tap the rich ones until you hit 250 with gloves or 255 without, but don't worry about it. It'll only take a half a lap or so before you reach that. This corner is especially nice since it usually has 2-4 to four nodes right next to each other. Continue mining until you loop around the Everlook, the neutral town. Inside there, smelt all your true silver and then thorium ore. It'll gray out at 290, so continue farming from there until you hit 300. 
Then go back to Org for Horde or Darkshire for Alliance and train Master Miner plus anything available. Grats on 300 and as you fly back to Winter Spring, go take a break. Get some cookies or pizza or both. It's been a little over two hours, so I think you deserve it. After your break, continue mining in Winter Spring. Things should start to green out and it may take a few veins to get skill points, but it's still faster than going straight to Outlands and farming Fell Iron. It should only take a lap or so around the zone, so it goes really quick. At 325, return to the mining trainer and learn everything available. Next, grab a port to Shatrath from a mage and fly over into Nagrand. In Nagrand, follow the route down through the bottom of the zone and only enter caves that have normal adamantite ore since you won't be able to mine rich yet. Once you loop around the town, use the little forge to smelt some adamantite ore and reach mining 340. Naturally, if you've already got to 340, you can just continue on the route until you hit 350, which should take max 2 laps. After you hit 350, hearth back to Org or Stormwind and learn Grandmaster Miner along with anything else available. If you have any Eternium, smelt that and then use it to make Fell Steel. You may only get a few points, but it's worth it. At this point, you'll also want to empty your bags. I just send everything off to an alt. Also, make sure to have max 3 mining bags for the next part. If you have 4 mining bags, you'll run out of space from gems and other items as my noob self found out. Okay, when all your bags are empty and sorted, grab the Zephyr boat and head over to Boreen Tundra in Northrend. Boreen Tundra has a pretty simple route, but it may take you 4 or so laps to get the skill points you need. Nodes are distanced a bit more than you may be used to, especially when there are a few others in the zone farming. I had 385's mining or farming ore in Boreen, so it slowed me down a bit. Nevertheless, it wasn't too bad and I ended up grabbing a rare achievement while I was there. After you hit 395 with gloves or 400 without, fly over into Sholazar Basin. Sholazar Basin is a nice change from Boring Tundra. You'll start to see decent experience from nodes and they won't be nearly as distant, and the only downside is you'll find rich serenite and titanium nodes that you won't be able to mine. Shouldn't be much of a problem though since within 2 laps or so you should easily hit 425 and beyond to Mount Hygel anyway. After hitting 425 or so, head to the Mining Trainer, learn everything available on the illustrious Grandmaster Miner. Make sure you wait until 425 even if you have the Glove Enchant or you won't be able to train illustrious GM. Now that you're all trained up, head over to Mount Hyjal by using the portal in your faction's major city. Each node is netting 4620 experience which isn't bad at all. I'm only level 80 so a few downsides of the mobs rock me in my noob gear and I of course have to keep my distance from any 85 or I'll get pwned. I just make sure I'm careful not to get killed although I almost die right here. On top of that someone thought that they were going to steal my node, I don't think so. That reminds me, always CC the mob, loot the node and then kill it. That way if you die you get the ore at least and also no one can steal it from you while you fight. As for the route of Mount Hyjal, it's really simple. Just stick to the line on the map and you'll be good. At around 450 you can hearth, oh excuse me, hearth to org our stormwinds and smelt the obsidian into bars for some skill points. It's a quick portal back but you won't save much time at all so I don't bother with it. Oh and if you're wondering, mining these earth elementals can drop volatile earth but they won't give skill points or experience from mining them. As I leveled, I noticed I wasn't finding nearly as many nodes as I should be, so I did a quick who, and it gave me my reason. There were six or more others likely farming along with about the same alliance. Even with the high competition, it won't slow you down much. After reaching 475, you can head to Deep Home or Oldham. Since there are a lot of rich nodes and level 85s farming Oldham, I'll stay in Mount Hyjal, but Oldham can be better for most, so I suggest going there for the extra gold from Elementium Ore and better leveling route. If you stay in Mount Hyjal like me, the last few points will take a couple nodes, but not a big deal really, and it goes quick. My guy really sucks, and you can see that reflected in the hour it takes to kill a silly dragonkin. Well, at least I hit level 81, right? Mining contributed to about half the level. My experience per node has gone up to 5,732. Not too bad. At around lap 3 or 4 you should hit 500 so now it's time to go to Oldham. Hearth back to Org or Stormwind and learn everything that's available from the mining trainer. Next take the portal to Oldham or fly there if you haven't unlocked it yet. 
And here is the most important thing ever to succeed in leveling mining to 525. Get ruffle stomped by standing in Deathwing's fire. Or in this case, flying in it. In case you're wondering, yes, people are flying from all over the zone to stand in the fire, die, and get the achievement. Awesomeness at its best. Burn. Anyway, back to the leveling of mining. The route I have for Oldham is pretty big, but I'm only doing that because of the competition. This place is packed most of the time, and I don't think I've said this before, but it also pays to have a fast computer. You'll always get the node before someone and be able to fly off without them noticing until it's too late. Sorry, Pally. See ya. From time to time, you'll find some pyrite, which is the titanium of Kata, the highest ore, but you won't be able to mine until 520 with the glove enchant or 525 without. No biggie, you'll be there in no time. Sometimes you'll get a node near these elites, and if you're 85, it's not really a problem. I'm 81 though, so I cyclone the front guy, loot the node, and book it out of there before I get rocked. I do the same with level 85 alliance. Oldham's route is very simple and it has some pretty cool surprises. You can get 4 to 5 nodes spawning in the same general location. This can happen in a few locations, but the most common are the ones I marked on the map. Another thing that can happen while mining in any zone is phasing problems with nodes. You'll see the node on the map, but when you get to it, it disappears. Sucks that you can't hit the ore from it, but you can still get skill points and experience. You just gotta be quick. Okay, so after a little over 5 hours, I finally hit 525 in mining. Rats to everyone else who hit 525 or will hit 525 as well. The last thing you want to do is list everything you mined up on the auction house and see how much gold you made. I'll list everything for 12 hours and only smelt bars when the price is worth the time. Alright, it's been a little over a day and most stuff sold. Looks like leveling brought in 3,654 gold, plus the stuff that didn't sell, so maybe 4,000 gold give or take. That's not too bad since on top of leveling mining and getting some gold, you're also leveling your character if you're not 85 yet. Mining is also a really awesome gold maker, and if you want to see the best gold making routes for each zone, check my website for my mining gold making series. Congrats again on 525 and mining, and I hope this video was helpful. Please subscribe and visit tarawildguides.com for more free wild guides and news. Thanks for watching. Now go mine through a hex and run like hell, silly shaman.